welcome to another Project Paella. We're going to do desserts today. And so um, I brought my trusty hat. This is my new chef hat to try to be a chef. And we're going to do is an apple pie. So here are all the things we have for the apple pie. We have our nutmeg, our cinnamon, our six apples, and our rolling pin, wax paper, sugar, our flour, and our apple pie. We got this at a local a local shop and this is really nice pie. This is my favorite apple pie um, pie pan and then we have a couple bowls. Alright so let's get started and I usually start by skinning all of our apples. So I can do that right here. I usually peel them This is the rolling pin. No, like this. No, this is the um, pie. pie. Or were you talking about this? Yes. This is a peeler. It actually will peel and core, but um, it's old, so I don't like it. I'm gonna have to pull this down like this. We're gonna put our apples in here. That's fine. You can just cut the knife, cut the apples with the apples knife. with the knife like this. See? So we'll see if we can get through the rest of these. And I usually cut these in half. Like that. So we got five more to go. Oh no, never eat pie before. What? I have. That's right, you now. don't like pie, do you? Mm. Hate it. Hate it. Well, maybe one of these days you'll like it. You'll want to try it. What do you think? Why do you have that chef hat on, Dad? Because then it makes me more official. And when people watch watch it on YouTube, they think, hey, there's a good chef. Mm -hmm. Alright, ready? Here we go. So we once you cut cut the apples, we then do this is such a simple recipe. Six apples. You can peel them and cut them. One cup of sugar. And then we open up our, our flour. Just a little bit. Look at all that stuff. Yeah, show them how much flour. So I just put like a little at the video. Right here. Just put a little bit of that on there. And now we, so we have the flour, or one cup of sugar, a little bit of flour. Now we do like a teaspoon of nutmeg. Tablespoons of 
cinnamon. So the cinnamon is Trader Joe's ground cinnamon. We love Trader Joe's. Our mom, my mom. I like it too. So that's about one tablespoon. And you can make it as cinnamon as you cinnamon cinnamon. How you say it? Cinnamon. As you would like. Exactly. All right, there we are. We're recording. Look at it. It's super fun. So, but yeah, look over here, so stick yeah, We are mixing up our sugar and our nutmeg and the our cinnamon. The question is, how is this apple pie? Uh, we'll we'll see in a few minutes. Here. Okay. Yes, and so I'm kind of mixing it up. Who is recording this? So don't expect good. Don't expect good tasting food. What? No, don't expect. Good camera. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing pretty good, I think. Nope, I did this. Okay, so now Sergio's taking a little break too. So what we're gonna do is we're going to prep the pan, and I usually do that with the butter. I love to use butter with uh, Sergio. I love to use butter with my apple pie. Sergio, we're doing a video over here. So I'm going to get that in the corner there. So it looks like that. So maybe I'll have to use my finger here to get it in there. So that, that's what it looks like. Now I usually end up using, instead of sticking my hand, a bunch of... Uh, flour in there as well just to kind of move it around and get it nice and like that so that it's good there we go and the rest of it I can put on here we'll use that later but that's pretty good so that's the way we want it to look so that it doesn't stick. So now we get to make the crust. And this is really super easy. Again, I learned this from Grandma. And it's one cup of flour to one stick of margarine. And she always used, um, so it's about a little more than one cup, but it's about a cup. You can see that here. I usually put that in there like that. And here we use Imperial Margarine. Make sure you have clean hands when you do this because you're going to be playing with the dough. And make sure it's cold. Don't use warm. Very, very important. No cold margarine. Use warm. And now what we want to do is add a little bit of water. I usually just get a, like a, a teaspoon or two in my hand. Just a little sprinkle. That's it. And then we also want to use some salt. So probably like half, half a teaspoon of salt. Not very much, just a little bit. Put that in there so you still have some there. And that's it. Now we take our fingers and we just kind of push it together. We don't want to play with it too much because then it'll, it'll get too hard or too stiff. And see how it's breaking up into little chunks. We just keep pushing it around like that. So that's pretty much it. So end up getting that stuff all over my hands. You want to get a good a good ball. Again, don't don't mash it too much, or so it'll get too hard on you. So at this point, I will put this aside. This bowl will go aside here, and what we'll do is wash your hands real quick. And here's my little secret, is wax paper. This is what we're gonna use to roll it out. Put this aside a second. Our wax paper right there. Put our butter over here. And this goes here. Oops, we need, we need some flour. 
Always put your flour down first so it has something to kind of spread out from. Like that. And so I usually push it around, kind of give it some edges so it doesn't split up. You'll see it when you roll it out, it'll start splitting. And that's what you don't want a lot of that because then it'll be hard to put it in there. So now we'll put a bunch of flour on top. This is where we use grandma's rolling pin. This rolling pin is about 100 years old. And it's uh, older than you and me. To g combine, buddy, you bet. So. What? Oh, yeah. Because I'm only nine and yeah. Yeah, you're nine and I'm, I'm uh, 26. If I was in my 50s, then. Yeah? yeah. I'm only in my nine. Am I a good looking 26 year old? 26? Don't look 26. I don't look 26. Are you sure about that? Oh, I'm in my 40s? Okay, I'll take that. We have great right hair, so it kind of makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, that kind of gives it away, doesn't it? So I'm kind of rolling in and out from the center. And then we're going to check with this to see if that's pretty darn close. So here's the other trick. If we're going to put that on there. What I do is take the wax paper and I roll it over. This is my grandma would actually roll this out on the countertop. And she would, she would actually peel it off with her fingers. She was so good at it. And just I've tried that multiple times and failed, so I gave up. And now I use this method, and it almost never fails me. So, kind of roll it out to there. Give it, give it an edge like that. You can see we're still short on some sides, which is okay because we'll just take, take a little here. Put it over here. We can kind of push things up a little bit too. See that? And we kind of cut the edges off so it's nice and even. There we go. Like that. There we are. So that's that. And now. We take a fork, and what we want to do is put little air holes here. So we're poking the center so that we don't have air pockets or weird stuff happen as this thing cooks out. Okay, there we go. Looking beautiful. All right, so we're going to do our next crust, and then we'll also start the, the oven and um, get that preheated so it's ready to go. Okay, welcome back from that wonderful break. What was our uh, sponsor for the uh, for the hour, Sergio? Who, who was our sponsor? You know, you forgot. Well, I don't know if we have one. Who would you like it to be? There we go. There, there's a little bit less this time. We're just going to do one one cup exactly. I usually our sponsor is uh, Sergio. It's sponsored by Sergio. Is that what you're saying? Uh, all right, here we go. One stick of cold margarine. So my margarine's getting a little bit warm, so that might be part of the issue we're having. Okay, there's that. And like we said, what do we do? Add some water. Again, I kind of use a teaspoon or two of water. I just use my hand, sprinkle that on there. And now we do like a half a teaspoon of salt. Again, here's kind of a teaspoon. Kind of do a half of that. Like that. See, there's still some left. There we go. Like that, and now we just kind of move it in there like we did before. There we are. So again, put this aside. So, I always use a new uh, wax paper because the other one can get a little bit sticky. You can do whatever you want. Again, let's add a little bit of um, flour to our base here. Mm -hmm. Okay, check it out. 
check it out. Looking good. Okay, now what we end up doing, let me get this out of the way. Don't make too much of a mess. Now our next step is to put this on top, but we have to um, we have to put our our uh, apples in the pie. So I want to show you here. This has been sitting for a while, so it kind of gets a little juicy as it sits. Kind of looking kind of creamy. I kind of give it a little stir, not breaking up the apples too much, but kind of give them, getting them little littler chunks so it sits better in the pie. And we just pour it into the pie. And the other piece that we need to do is I usually put butter on top of this so that we get a nice good cook. Just like put like, oops, I put two or three or four big chunks kind of in the middle. And that melts all over everything and makes a really tasty apple pie. So I use a, about three quarters of a stick of butter by the time I'm done. And that's it. So now we just add A-M-B-U-S-H. All right, so now that we ha have this all set up, we have to poke some holes in it again so Dad, it doesn't you, blow up. Can you ask Alexa to do it again? Cause I Alexa, spell ambush again. Ambush is spelled A M B U S H. All right. So what I love to do is to add. Uh, we're gonna put this flour aside. Add a little nutmeg on top. A little nutmeg like that. I sprinkle it so it gives it a beautiful look. A little bit of cinnamon on top. You can do it how you want. Sometimes I'll actually. Sugar. I love to pour a little sugar on top of this. That'll caramelize on top of it. So we got a good deal going on here. Look at that. That's looking beautiful. Sometimes I'll do something fun, like I'll take extra, extra um, crust here, and we'll roll it out and make like a. If we're getting up on Christmas, this is a holiday season, so we want to roll this out. And I'll make like a Christmas tree. So now we just have to put it in the oven at 350 degrees for exactly one hour. And um, that's about it. So let's put it in the oven. We got it at 350 degrees and we are gonna cook it up for one hour. Here we go. Hey buddy, what you doing? What do you think? We just did an apple pie. It's baking. We got another 43 minutes. I uh, yeah. look at this is real. See we got we got cooking cooking fingerprints there. We got an apple pie there. Look. We are doing I, uh, awesome. Uh, Okay, you take over, buddy. What no. are you going to make now? Nothing. cookies we got flour we got sugar molasses shortening nutmeg our ginger powder we yes, have allspice cinnamon the second time. baking powder so that's cut number two cane sugar and of course salt so what we're going to do first is mix all of our dry 
ingredients together. And so that's going to include um, our half cup, or no, a, a one cup of brown sugar. Yeah. So this is the recipe of molasses cookies. So if you want to have molasses cookies, then you should probably... Well, there's, yeah, there's, there's um, two parts to this. There's what's called wet and dry. So this is part of the okay. wet. We have uh, shortening, which I think is three cups of, and it said packed brown sugar. So I'm packing it and grabbing a little bit more here mm -hmm. and packing it down, right? Yeah. And See we'll put it in here because that's a good people, good mixing bowl like right there. And like. in there, we're going to put a three cup shortening. So I got to open this up. That. Dad. There we go. Okay, there we go. How was that? Does that work? There. All right, here we go. So in this case, we'll use a spoon and we'll put our shortening. Look at that. That is some awesome looking shortening, I'm telling you. Nothing better than a good bunch of shortening. Yeah, buddy. What? Hmm? So three quarters cup, I think that's pretty much close to three quarters cup. Yeah, buddy. Okay. All right, so we'll put that in there. Fire! There you go, we're working here, buddy. So we'll put that there. And now it says we need to kind of whip that stuff together. So that'll be kind of the challenge. Gotta use a little muscle here. And uh, we use, let's use this. So this is the first piece of the wet. Now we just add, we add the egg and the molasses. And it's a um, half cup of molasses. I have my notes here if you're wondering what I'm looking at. So get all that stuff off. I just do an egg here, like that. Hopefully we don't got any. Throw that away. And now we do molasses. Here's our molasses. We do half a cup of this. Here's our crusty little measuring thing. Half cup. This is more or less burnt sugar. There we go, half cup. Goes right in there. And the molasses we're using today is uh, Cadia Organic Blackstrap Molasses. So kind of try to get all that stuff out. Some people might not like the smell of this stuff, but it is super good in these cookies, let me tell you. Okay, so there's that. We're going to... And that goes there. Now we can do the other ingredients. So let's put this aside for a minute. And... We will add oh, two and a half cups of flour. Okay, here we go. Get our bigger cup. Uh, this is this is two cups right here. Put that in there. There's two. Cup. There we go. That's about a half, I think. Yeah. Looks like looks like a half. What do you guys think? I think it's that's about a half. Close enough. All right. Let's put that aside. Now we do the other thing. Got our my teaspoon here. And now we have we did our white sugar. We got our two cups of flour. I keep little cards so that I can kind of write down my 
ingredients and check them off. That way I don't forget anything. Half a teaspoon of salt. Here's our salt. And there's about half a teaspoon of salt. Put this over here. And now we do baking soda. It says two teaspoons of baking soda. Here we go. Kind of, I like to have a little. Mm. I wonder what it's going to look like when it's done. It's going to be uh, super tasty. Like it doesn't that. smell so good right no. now, but it'll be it really good. It smells like barbecue sauce. Actually. It does. Yeah, I know. They make a lot of barbecue sauce with it. All right, one teaspoon of. And it even looks like cinnamon. Kind of it's got a barbecue looking to it, doesn't it? Texture. That's about a teaspoon right there. We'll put a little bit more. There we go. I'm not like the pros where I have everything laid out. They put it all in little, little, uh, little containers or cups. I'm not at that point just yet, but maybe I will soon enough. Okay. Oh yeah, I gotta have a little uh, apple cider. We're making some apple cider here. Mm. Mm -mm. Nice warm apple cider. Nice cold evening here in Portland, Oregon. There's my allspice. Mm, that smells pretty good. One teaspoon of that. Oops. Yeah, a little bit more. All right, that's good enough. That's looking pretty good, I think. All spice. It's like, I think all the spices, right? Is that why it's called all spice? And here we go. We get uh, one teaspoon of ground ginger. How do you spell door? Door? Alexa, how do you spell door? There's one teaspoon. Door is spelled D-O-O-R. There you go, door. Here's one teaspoon of the ground ginger. We're using one that we got from a... Chinese store. And the only thing left is now uh, nutmeg. So here we are with nutmeg. Teaspoon of nutmeg. So I like these better because you get exact amount. That's pretty cool. You can stick it in there and get the exact amount. So that's a teaspoon. We're going to do it just a tad more. So that's that. That's all the dry. We are Going good with the dry. Let's see. So I'm just gonna mix all this together like that so it's nice and together. Distributed, as you would say. Well he's he's gonna be kind of a crazy guy if we let him in. So yeah. If there's little chunks of spices, whatever, try to break it up. I just saw a little chunk of ginger. All right, so now it says fold it in. Fold it in means that you're going to be stirring and putting it in there, not a whole big chunk. And so I'm going to put a little bit in there like that. And we'll mix it up a little. Let's see. fridge let it sit for a couple hours because it needs to be cool and cold and that way you can roll it into nice little one inch balls and then you put the um, the oven at 350 degrees and you put a pan of these in and you cook them for about nine or ten minutes and you're set so we are gonna stop 
and then put this in the fridge. There we go. All right, here we are. We're ready to do it. We're ready to do it. This. All right. Hi, Sergio. You eating? All right. Here we go. Hi, Boulder. Let's get this thing out of here. All right. Oh, looking so good. Here we go. Ready, set, go. Oh, my goodness. That is really good. Amazing. All right. Turn that off. We're all set, buddy. You ready for some pie? So here we are, covered and in the fridge. And that's it for tonight. We have molasses cookies. We can start cooking tomorrow. And our apple pie is done. Okay, here we go. We've got our timer going and we have our cookies in the oven in, in nine minutes. It should be good, right Boulder? What do you think? Hmm? Mm -mm -mm. We have cookies that are ready. Woohoo! Woohoo! Maybe I should smash them down a little bit. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, they're a little puffed up, so we put them uh, down with the little spatula. Kind of press them down a little bit like that. And I'm going to leave them in there another hey. minute. And should be ready. It's nine to ten minutes. All right. We're done again. Oh, yeah. See? Now that looks really good. That's perfect. Now we're going to take these out now. Right there. And we have our little grate here. We can put our cookies on so they can cool up. There's one, two, three. Beautiful. Oh, no. I just have to put on my jacket and then I have to put on my backpack and then I'll go. Yeah. Do Birch Community Services began in 1992 with a donated bag of squished bread on the front porch of Barry and Suzanne Birch. They shared the bread with some single moms and other families in need in their neighborhood. Within the following weeks, other food retailers who had heard of the Birch's spirit of giving were donating their surplus for redistribution by the Birch's to a growing number of needy families. The organization was steadily grown to become one of the largest food distribution programs in Oregon and has been within the top 25 organizations in Portland Business Journal's annual list of top 100 Portland nonprofits and has never received a penny in government funds.
And this thing is, I have no idea what this thing is. And this other thing is, I don't know. Okay, I don't okay buddy, know. stop it. I don't know. Stop and restart it. Stop and restart it. I don't know. Wait, I want to... Okay, it's running. Can I blow on this piece? No. Uh, go. Go. We're on. We're on. We're what? Back. It's working. Really? Go. Then why is it this way? Because you're supposed to be videotaping me. Okay. We're going to make molasses cookies. Yay! All right, so molasses cookies <laughs> consist of flour, yes. sugar, Molasses, some shortening, nutmeg, allspice. We have ginger powder. That's a key ingredient. Ginger, ginger powder. And cinnamon. And we have a baking powder, salt, and of course, all important, cane sugar. What? Oh, it doesn't work. Well, what? You have to flip it around. Okay, you're gonna have to know all that stuff again. Okay.